was going to wait until daytime today, this afternoon, but I decided to come on this morning to do a JLJ this morning, and I decided I'm going to talk about it now. Good morning. Do my coffee? My voice is coming in. Chat room is open. We are live and in color, and I'm of color. <laughs> um, old joke. Here we go. There we go. Everything's set up. The likes, everything. It is day after uh, St. Patrick's Day. <clears throat> I have my corned beef and stuff. My voice is just having some issues, but other than that, we're going to work it out. Um, yeah, I was going to wait, and I said, nah, I'm not going to wait. I'm going to talk about it now, because I just think it's it's something that's extraordinary. Um, Sid Michaela taped her final scenes as Trina on General Hospital. Now, those of you guys who don't watch soaps, um, this is a nice little thing for you to learn. Those of you who don't watch General Hospital, sorry, this is, but this is something General Hospital-centric, but it's very interesting. In recent history, very, there have been very few people who come onto a show and capture the hearts of everyone. I liked this actress when she first came on. They introduced this Trina character. I liked her. I liked her. I was like, okay, she's cute. And she really did a great job in the role of Trina Robinson. Held her on with the adults, fit nicely with the kids. The fact that she's a black character is almost secondary because she's so well loved by the public. I, you know, it's it's so interesting to me. I, I, she, because her last day was yesterday, and um, and so she's thanking everybody. And people are just like the the love and support. And I'm doing now. I'm doing it now. The next day, for this actress, it's just immense. It's it's so it's how funny stuff for us, man. So that's cute. But, I, I, but for me, I've been in this business 15 years. I have met a lot of people. I have interviewed a lot of people. I have worked with a lot of people. And there are some folks who just have it. Whatever it is, they have it. And it can be different things. But some people you meet, they're like, you out there, you may have friends, you people you meet, you just go, you instantly like them. Or you're instantly intrigued by them. Like... It's, and for the, the camera doesn't lie and all that stuff. Just it does, you know, and, and it just it shows everything. And sometimes the camera loves you. Um, <clears throat> you create chemistry with whoever you're with. In her case, great chemistry with Joss, uh, which was uh, my girl Eve McCoy. Great chemistry, of course, with Nicholas Chavez as as Nick as Spencer. Um, I mean, she just she came in. They had a little, gave her lots of storyline. She worked it out. Adult storyline, kid storyline, teen storyline. She, a lot of, I don't know, I'll get into the black stuff later. Because right now, first, I just want this character comes on who looks like her. And, and it's just it almost automatically accepted by just about everyone. I'm, I'm really, I'm very fascinated by that. I'm so fascinated. I think it's a wonderful thing. It's how it should be. I love it, but it's when I look back and I go, "Wow, she she won my heart over." And I don't even know her personally. I don't know her personally. Um, and then, in fact, she wanted to go to college, and she wanted to continue her education. Made me warm my heart more. I know folks got mad, and everybody said, "I get why they're upset." I get why they're upset. Totally get it. This great actress has great chemistry, and you don't want her to leave, and. Uh, I totally get that. You have to mourn the loss of her leaving. But to me, that tells me that this young lady, that yes, that her, yes, I agree with you. She put her, she put her education first. But this young lady has some brains. And she's thinking about the big picture. She's thinking about the long-term goal. Acting will always be there. She can always come back. Now, will your hospital always be there? I don't know about that. But acting will always be there. I hope your hospital's still there when she's done with college. Um, 
you know, because soaps are, you know, are about that. You can always leave, come back, leave, come back. I just think, I just thought, what a beautiful thing that she's promoting education. Now, college isn't for everybody. Nobody has to go to college. That's fine. People, people like you know, Eve McCoy who's doing college and the acting. She's working that out. Okay. Everybody's different. So folks get off of her because, well, I can't see like Eden does. And blah, blah. Everybody's different. Who knows? Um, you know, and, but I stand by her and her decision to go, okay, I'm going to put myself first. Acting is in some ways a privilege. I will come back to it maybe at some, maybe I won't, maybe she won't, who knows? I just feel, I just feel great things for her. I, like I said, I don't know her personally, but I feel, I just feel like she has some great, a great future ahead of her, whatever she decides to do. You know, and I just, and I, so that made me endear her, myself to her more. But looking at her character in the show, everyone loves her. And it's, it's going to be very interesting, this new chick coming in, um, because she has big shoes to fill. Oh, she did. Oh, Sydney. She did. That wasn't very nice. To, you know, and that's, and, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. These actors don't, don't owe you nothing. They don't have to go online and talk to you. They don't have to message. You don't have to be on social media. They're liars who are on social media. They don't do anything. So when one of the actors decides to reach out, I'm, I'm happy to hear that, decides to reach out and talk to fans. I love that. And I hope they were respectful. I hope they were nice about it. Um, but, you know, it's funny. People always think of adults and, like, older adults as the strong actors. There are great younger actors out there and always have been in history. You know, um, I, I, just, I keep thinking about our girl, Cameron Grimes, who literally grew up on Young and the Restless. She grew up on the show. And she is, and Cameron is a wonderful actress. She's so natural. Chemistry with everybody. You know, she just, she just, they throw stuff at her and she just, and she does it. You know, there are some actors who, you know, who really, who at an early age, they have it. They have it. Um, you know, it's just, some people are naturals to a craft. And it's funny when it, when it matches up. Because I know people who are naturals in other fields too. They finally find that job or the field they're in, and they just say, "You're like, wow, you're just you're really you're just really good at this," or just or it, or it just it totally fits you, you know that really fits you. Oh, good, okay, good. I'm glad they were nicer. Because fans can be crazy too. That's why I'm so glad they were nicer. There are some folks who can't be online because fans are too crazy, and that's sad because they just want to be online and interact with you. But when fans get a little too crazed. They have to get off. And that's, that's the shame about social media. Social media is supposed to be a place to bring people together and, like, hopefully you can, like, interact and have exchanges and of ideas and, and whatever. And some people can't even, can't even be online. They can't be online. They can't. I feel bad for those folks. I know they want to be online. You know, we all get this. I get it, too. We're all, we're here because of you. You have the power in many ways. It's, it's one of those weird double-edged sword things. It's like, we do what we want to do because we like to do this. And fans shouldn't dictate what we do necessarily. But fans are why we're here. <laughs> anybody, anybody who tunes in, the eight people watching my show right now, that's eight people who could do something else. Something else. You guys know we do something else. You don't have to sit here with me. You could do like, you know, screw James. You know, you could totally be doing something else, but you're choosing to sit with me for however long I decide to ramble on here and support me. I'm press, you're in the like button. Thank you. The thumbs up. You're probably going to share this. I'm going to share this with other people. And whoever takes a look at this video or listens to this uh, podcast, I know for a fact you hold the power. I have shows that are hits. And I'm like, really? People are still tuning into that? Like, I, I'm grateful for that. I told you, and all, all the stars, all the actors, we all understand that. Producers, right? We all get it. You know, and there has to be a level of kindness and respect out there. And if there is, everybody can talk and coexist. And even if there's a healthy debate, that's fine too. You can say, I didn't like that storyline, blah, blah, blah. But there are folks who are so mean. They're so mean. And it's like, 
you can't go anywhere from that. It's like you just go, I don't, you know, say the most horrible things and you look a whore when you were dressed like that. Like, like, but then what do you say to that? Like, you can't, there's nothing, I mean, and there are folks who deliberately troll and go out there just to cause problems. And that's where I don't get that at all. I don't understand. I'm like, you must be a miserable person to that all you do is go out there and start problems. Because you think that's funny or that gets you, you I don't I don't understand. I don't I don't understand. I'm so busy. I don't have time to troll people. I guess I don't I don't have that kind of thing. I'll make it today. I'm listening to this to my my voice today. It's kind of the weather's been changing, so my voice is like going off and on right now. Yes, I know you do. You're one of my biggest supporters. I appreciate you very much. I do. And I, but I but still, even you care still to say if you didn't didn't feel like it, you didn't have, you don't have to listen to me or watch my shit. You know, good, do whatever you want. But I take, you know, that's why I talk to you guys. That's why I call you guys my village. I try to talk to you. I try to if I don't have a show doesn't happen, I try to tell you why it doesn't happen. Like I try to I try to engage the fans because you guys are my family. We're all in this together, we're all a community. And so I try to talk to you. And there's some folks who are just super mean and are just super rude. And you know, I'm like, does that does that does that help anything? And so when the Sydney Michaela stuff happened, when she was like, I'm leaving, people, there were some mean comments made. And so people just being those pissed. Sadness I get. You got more of the loss of it, but like people were just mean. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is a positive. It's I know it's it's your soap opera. I know you're not happy about that, but it's a positive thing and a positive message she's sending out to, to, to young people. I, I'm like, I just, I just, it's something positive. I I just don't understand sometimes. And people can turn anything, you can twist it around, something negative. Uncle James, that's me, Uncle James, right? Exactly. Um, you know what I mean? It's like it's, it's so I, I I there are people who can take anything positive flip it and make it the most negative thing on earth. And you're just like, that's just, that takes skill and bitterness to do that. Now, trust me, I can be bitter and shady too. Um, but when I hear something good, I'm excited. I'm like, yes, yeah, good for you. So I always, like I said before, mourn the loss of the actress, obviously, in the character. Um, but don't be mean to her. Uh, let her move on with her life. Support whatever project she's doing. You know, that's how you can do that. Um, and see what's going on. And this new actress, give her a chance. This new actress might be really, really, really good. And win you over also. And have chemistry with anybody also. She may not. You know, she, you know these, who knows? But we have to give her a chance and see what she can do. You know, actors, that's their job. And, you know, it's so funny in other things. Uh, other parts of acting, like plays and musicals, and there's lots of recasts all the time. People don't always play the same, you know, all the time. So it's people put their own stamps on stuff. And like I said, we talked this before on daytime today. Some of your favorite actors and characters are recasts. They just are, you know. Uh, Peter Bergen, for example. I mean, I just he's doing amazing work right now on YNR. He's a recast. He wasn't the original Jack. It was. It was. Uh, Terry Lester, who was great as Jack also back in the day. But this, I mean, but Peter, if no one gave him a chance, could you imagine? Peter Brooks is one of, one of the greatest actors of all time. He's one of the greatest, in my opinion, one of the greatest actors in all of all time. He is so good as Jack. He can imbue anger and sadness and loneliness and humor all at once. And I mean, if we didn't give him a chance, we would have it. We just wouldn't have this great. We would have. A, we wouldn't have decades of great performances. We just wouldn't have it. I think that's it's, it's, it's I always acknowledge it's hard at first. It for all of us at first. <coughs> it's like sticker shock. Like at first, like, that's kind of weird. What's going on there? Then you realize it's okay. We it's fine. Like folks, relax. Relax. It's gonna be okay, but I just, I just, I see great, I see great things for Sydney. And if she, I'm gonna tag her in this phone, in this video. And if she watches it at all, Sydney, you are amazing. 
You're an amazing story, a young woman. But I want to mention, and I'm going to the black part now, because I can, because I'm black, if I can. Um, that's also extraordinary in a world where we see, don't see as many black actors get the accolades that they should. Um, there are some, she had a potential of being a black superstar on daytime. If she had stayed on, it was she. I could see her. I just saw her really burgeoning. It was it was coming. It was coming together. Um, and yeah, her scenes were powerful. It was a great way to go out. I totally agree with you. Um, and I loved her relationship, on relationship with Brooke, Brooke Kerr, who plays Portia, showing a black mother and daughter how there's certain ways you don't talk to black mothers. <laughs> Um, and so in certain ways we, we respond, I really do, it's true to form. Um, so I appreciated that realness actually. And they were very close, which I was happy, I was happy to see that also. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, she was in, it was potentially in an interracial relationship, potentially, and fans were here for it. There was nobody upset about it that I know of. I mean, they were upset they weren't they weren't as vocal. There are folks who were here for it. When her and Cam, they're flirt with those two. There are folks who are here for that too. So that tells you a lot about the character and about her herself, that fans accepted her. And it shouldn't matter. Um, that means we're coming a long way, maybe. I mean, with some of the stuff, because I remember on Y and R, there were certain storylines where they were flirting with with Neil and, and Victoria or Neil and, and, and Ashley, and then everyone flee there. You know, um, there were certain storylines, they were playing with the, the, the certain, uh, certain shows, they were playing with interracial stuff, but didn't go there all the way. Where on this one, there was, it, there was a nice slow build. It was, it was coming together. I liked the pacing of it. Those two, I mean, just, and those two actors had sorts of chemistry. That was, it was off, it was, it was just off the charts. It was just off the charts. Um, and I just think, I think we, we've come a long way. I mean, just again, representation really does matter. It's just such a, it's an interesting thing. So this actress really did. Oh yeah, and yes. Sydney and Mara's friendship off and on screen. Yes, I, well, Mara West the queen for me. Mara West, you plays Ava, that's the queen. She can't do no wrong. She can't do no wrong whatsoever. Um, but with Trina and, and Ava, Ava got a chance to have a redo, so to speak. Um, Trina's like a daughter to her. Uh, but they also started becoming friends. And I thought that was a nice progression. That she wasn't just a, like a kiki replacement. She became her friend. And they really were there for each other. They really humanized Ava. And I love that, you know, there are times when she was kind of like, I saw another side of Ava. Should I? Should I? Should I? But ultimately, they have a friendship. And Portia and Ava have a friendship. You know, so I thought that's it's really good. Um, I'll thank you, GSRE Deeds. Yes, thank you. Um, she's a she's a friend of Flobo's, and I met her through him. And when she went on General Hospital, that that was crazy. Okay, now I know somebody went on General Hospital. That was crazy. It was a crazy. It was a crazy coincidence. Um, so we had, we had a great conversation. We did. We talked a lot more about other stuff too, not necessarily about GH. Sorry, folks, but we did get to GH. She gave some tidbits. So check that out. GH3 Deeds is out now with Anna Grant. It's out now. But yeah, we were we got into this conversation about race and stuff too. I mean, me, I'm always about race all the time. It's just me all the time. Um, <clears throat> but I think, yeah, but I think it's again back to Sydney. We got to see stuff that we normally don't see. And and her friendship with Joss was good too. It was a true, it was an honest friendship portrayal. Her and Cam, um, her and Curtis. All that fight we did in the beginning, remember all that. Um, her and Taggart, my buddy Real Andrews. Um, I mean, it's just she has some good stuff. You know, it's, it's she 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 should feel proud of her time on the soap. And remember, folks, soaps aren't easy, and it, they they film a lot in a hurry, in a quick class in a hurry, as mother always says. And she rose to the challenge. So again, if you're watching Sydney, we love you. I love you. We love you. Um, and whatever you decide to do next, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm totally here for it. Um, and, and it goes to, I uh, give credit to Mark Teshner, my buddy. What, 10 million time, uh, and, uh, 
uh, Emmy winning casting director. Mark can pick some really great people sometimes. He really finds folks. You're like, where'd you find these people? He's so good. And Mark, this was a good find. She was a good find. There's no T. We're praising Cindy Michaela. Her last day was yesterday on GH. So no tea, all pray, all praise. No tea, all praise. Just you know, she's. Oh, we're just kind of celebrating. It was her. Yeah, she left. Her last day was yesterday. So you know, you have you have a loop, Jamel. You don't know what's going on. I can't. I won't repeat everything I just said. But the fans went crazy about a month ago when she chose. She's choosing to go to college full time. The fans are pissed because uh, she's choosing education over over acting. But. She, but everybody's praising her. Um, she has, she did show growth as an actress. She did. I agree with you on that too. She did. So, yeah. So I know, I know it's, I was saying, Mel, she has it. Cindy Michaela has it. And I'm gonna, I, you missed the whole first part of my, my, you know, but the character, well, it's always a, always thought the character isn't leaving, but Sydney's leaving. The cast, it's being recast. I'm sorry, I was reading it as, okay, thank you, Texas Ranger. Yeah, no, her character has been recast. A new actress is stepping in. No, a new actress is stepping in. So now, now you start, now, now we got rumors going because I didn't say it the right way. Her character is staying. Trina is staying. Sydney Michaela is has left. A new actress has been cast and will be starting shortly. Sorry about that. Oh God! See, I, if I say one wrong thing, all of a sudden, there we go. There you go. That's crazy. Anna Woods. Yes, yeah, about race. I just said talking about race. Um, Four boys. Adam Woods and I were talking about race tonight, and said it's actually it's at it's at eight p.m. or is that seven or eight? Can't remember what time. You'll laugh or cry. Now you got me confused. What time does the thing start? Are we seven? Are we seven? I think we're, are, are we eight o'clock? Adam Woods. Now you're making me nervous. I can't remember what I said. I think it's eight o'clock, Adam. Well, I always, I think I always do my eight. Let's see. Yeah, eight o'clock, you guys. Eight o'clock, Adam. Eight o'clock. You scared me. Um, <clears throat> I just thought this is my hot about race all the time. I like my voice together. Follow Adam Woods and according to Woods, follow him everywhere. Um, but no, she's not being killed off. The character's there. Replacement. So Trina's still be there. There. I can't count. I know just I can't. I'm bad at math too, Adam. It's my Ingwood, it's my Ingwood high school education. It did me wrong. It did me in. I have a voice later. My voice is acting up today. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to have a voice later. Yeah, so it was uh Tabiana Ali. So we have a new we have a new Trina coming. So, but black, but for a black actress to gain to garner that much praise. And that much outrage, that says something. You know, I mean, very few black actors move to superstar status. I can think of, um, I can, I can think, I can think of uh, uh, Jesse and Angie on um, All My Children. They were the first black super couple. Darnell Williams and Miss Dipples herself, Emmy winner Debbie Morgan. Uh, they've gone to other things, but they were the first super couple that was black. Um, Passions had regularly had black folks all been through there. Thinking of, thinking of Passions. Yes, we know. We know who Brooke Kerr is. Yes, she's from Passions. Um, Days of Our Lives had Lexi and Abe. They had Lexi and Abe for all those years. Um, now they have Eli and Lonnie, which have moved to superstar status. Young and the rest of us had Neil and Drew. Neil and Drusilla, that was the, I mean, they were everything. Neil and Neil, again, my, my friend, the late Christoph St. John, I still can't believe he's not here. Um, it's just hurts my heart. Um, gone way too soon. He was the first black man on television in daytime to play a businessman. He had his own, oh, we talked about he had his own office. He was working for Victor. Like he was, they showed a black man in a different way they had never shown before. That's a big, that's a big thing. Seriously, it, that's, that's, that's such a, like you said, when he got his own office, 
representation. You, you people think subs are fluffy, subs are this, but millions of folks watch soap opera and millions of white folks watch soap opera. So to see a black man in a suit in his own office, that's still prog that's progress. That is still progress. Um, and he did that. And Drusilla and him had this amazing, amazing cast, Jesse. So yes, it was crazy. And so first there was Jesse and Angie, then it kind of went to Drusilla and Neil, <clears throat> Abe and Lexi. And then, you know, it's it's completely this whole, it's just, you know, we don't get that many. We just we just don't get that many that move to superstar status. We have this black actress who've been on shows, and you're know, like, they're there. But like, like a Malcolm who was on YNR also, Shamar Moore. Shamar Moore now is his own. It's his own thing now. I mean, he's just his own, he's his own, he's his own thing now. Smart Moore is huge. Um, but folks that really that, that become superstars on a soap opera that are black. It's just not it's not as lot as as the, as others. Um like you know, on uh, I'm trying to think, uh, I mentioned also Bold and the Beautiful. We got Carter right now. I guess Carter's like the main black guy, black guy kind of Lawrence St. Victor. Um, but again, even there. They've had some black couples, but nothing that's kind of made superstar status on that show either. Um, Wanted to Live. I can't think of anything without like black superstar. Um, except for back in the day when he had Al Freeman Jr. and they had um, Holly and all of that. When there's a whole the whole passing storyline. Um, you know, there's I mean, so to see black folks or any people of color, like I think the other person people love. Is my girl Lydia Look, who plays Selena Wu on uh, General Hospital. People love her. I love her too. Everybody loves her. It's the craziest thing. Everybody loves her. And again, she just makes her scenes come alive. Yeah, they got Brian James. He's a star. And we watched him grow up. Right, folks? We watched him grow up. That's right. Both people did have Usher on it. Usher, Usher Raymond. Uh, he was on, that's a, that's a good one, Usher. He was on there. But he was a star already. I mean, like, he, could be, he didn't become a star because of soaps. He was already a star. It was him and Amber. And that famous storyline. The baby. What is it? What is it? And the lights go out. Because we all want to know, was there going to be a black baby or a white baby? That's all, that's all we cared about. Because that's it. Because that's why it made me laugh because it was like, is it Rick's or is it Usher? Well, Usher, it's the, what's his name? What's his name on the show? Um, and also, we go away. And they, they dragged it out for like two or three days. First, she the lights went out and the skin went And all of a sudden, I was like, what is it? What is it? And then all of a sudden, the lights go out. Yeah, Miss, yeah, Lydia Look, who plays Miss Lena Wu, is the bomb. She is the bomb diggity. I love her. She knows I love her. We have a love affair online. I just think she's, and again, just happens to be Asian, right? Just happens to be Asian. I mean, it's like, it's like, why not? We need an Asian badass woman on TV. Why not? Why not? I mean, that, that's kind of, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it just adds more flavor. That's all. Yeah, that role can be played by anybody. Um, see, like, but again, I'm talking, I'm actually talking superstars because of a soap opera. Because you guys are mentioning people who are now kind of stars afterwards. Um, there are a lot of black folks, Morgan Freeman was on soap. I mean, you know, there are a lot of black folks on soaps that made it later. Um, but I think the problem is, we're talking about who became superstars on the soap while being black. And I was like, the black superstars while being on a soap. You know, so. I don't know where it comes from. I'm sorry, Adam. You ask. I'm, I'm waking up. I don't know. I don't. I'm. I, it's not hitting me right now. Where it, where it's where it's from. I mean, it's not hitting me. Um, no, I've never met Renee, so I, I've never met her. But I saw Hamilton. I loved it. When she was in it. A lot of stars later, later became stars. I'm talking about while on the soap, blew up, at, in spite of their color, and there's very little of very little Hispanic very little Asian or anything in daytime that became stars. Um, a. Martinez became a star on um, Santa Barbara as Cruz. So Cruz and Eden, they were the couple. 
Um, that's, the, that's the point. There are a lot of Black actors who could possibly blow up if they gave them storylines. That's the problem. I mean, that's, I mean that's, that's what it is. There could be, I mean, this Chanel chick on, um, on Days, I love her. Oh, she's hilarious. She's great. She has potential of being a star on daytime, like a blowing up. She's so good. So I'm just saying it's like there's, you give them the work. You give them the work. You know, I'm like, hello. Yeah, I liked her. I liked her state of mind with uh, Maurice. It was good. But I, know I love Lydia. I just think I think Lydia's the bomb. We've been talking online. I like you, Shabam. Tina Wang, same thing. He plays uh, Trask. Love her on days. Love her. They happen to be Asian. I will always support that. I will always support, you know, anybody of color on a soap opera just to see, because again, they're actors. I mean, so it shouldn't matter what their race is. It's just they're actors. So just bring them on. The world is, is, is mo- okay, so Maurice Bernard, yes, okay, he's, he's Hispanic, he's a star, but you know, when Maurice Bernard, he's not playing Hispanic on the show. He's playing, he's playing Italian. And so, and so for many people, they don't automatically go to him as this huge Hispanic figure, but you're right, he is of Hispanic descent. Same with um, Camila Bounus. She's the only one of the leads that's Hispanic on the show. And she plays Hispanic. And I'm, I'm, I'm Latinx myself. So, I mean, I'm just saying, we look at people, I'm like, okay, we need people clear. And it's different when, it's different when it comes to color and shape of, of face and features. It's like Maurice Bernard could pass for many other things. That's why he's playing Italian. No shade to him. No, you no shade to him at all. But I'm just saying, other folks, when you're black, a lot of times, and you look like this, you can't hide as anything else. And if you're if you're from Singapore or if you're or, if you're, or whatever, then you can't. Yes, I have an Asian coast. That's um, her name is Marissa Serafini. She was adopted by white folks. That's why she has the last name of Serafini. She's Filipino, or excuse me, Filipina, and she is. They know they always and her name. Her mother's name was uh, she may have been, but we never we've never seen her. That's the point. Her mo- his mother is his Sonny's mother has never been on the show. Deke was a white guy's stepdad. Her mother was never on the show. His father, called Mike Corbin, was white. He was a white dude. So I'm just saying we don't. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just saying that representation in terms of look. And so it looks like me on the screen, or somebody looks like someone else on the screen. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I'm just saying you guys are bringing about these other things. I'm like that's great, but like there's no there's no Latinx representation on on General Hospital through Sunny. He doesn't he doesn't uh, his kids look white. Nothing's happening with them. They don't do anything with that. They do nothing with that. They don't. It'd be great if he did. They did, but they don't. They don't do any of that. No, nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So he might as well just be a white dude. I'm, just, I'm sorry to say it, but that's just what it is. There's no Latin people looking at there going, well, he looks like one of us. He might, some might say that, but he's not, not the same, not the same as a Jordi Filosuso who plays Ray. He's completely, you can tell he's Latin um, guy. Um, you can tell he is. When they had Lola and all the one white arm, they were, they were Hispanic. They were Hispanic. Oh, man, just a theater. You to, oh, I'm, you know what, Adam? I was gone by then. Magic Justin Theaters came on, came out right after I left Inglewood. I left Inglewood in 87. And I didn't come back till 2009. So there was and there were many years when I came to visit. I didn't go to, I didn't go to that theater. I knew it was Magic Justin Theater. I knew it was there, but I never I never went. So I never I was never I never been there. I went to Magic Johnson's Fridays. I did do that, uh, but I was gone. Yeah, the Rosales family gone. Just for Ray. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm talking like looking at the screen and going, I identify with that person. Um, that's what I'm talking about in terms of stardom. Tomorrow, Tony, she was so she, yeah, she was, she was successful 
on a on, on astral terms and the interracial relationship with uh, Duck and McKechnie, one of the first interracial relationships. That's a good one you brought up from astral turns. I mentioned Victoria Wow earlier. I did already mention her earlier. Again, Kimberly McCullough. I know she's I know she's Hispanic, but on the show again, they don't. Again, it's not representation. They don't they don't show it. Wonder Woman was Hispanic. I had no idea that um, that Linda Carter was Hispanic until he said it. I was like, oh, why well, see those hips there? Okay, now I see the Hispanic parts. Now I see it. Same thing with Linda Ronstadt. Linda Ronstadt is Hispanic, is half Hispanic from her father. It wasn't until she started singing Spanish music, I was like, oh, okay. But they're portrayed as white girls. I love I love them both. I mean, I, I, I loved Wonder Woman and I love the Ronstadt music, but it wasn't until later, the Latina, and that was obviously on purpose. In the 70s, they didn't want a Latina superstar. They wanted just a hot woman to run around and we're in a lasso and we're in, and we're in tights or whatever. We know what that was about. So, you know, but yes, I was saying, but yeah, Tamara Tooney's a good one. That's a good one, Mel. She was, she was successful on After World Turns for a long time. And then she became a superstar from Law and Order and all of that. But Victoria Rowell, I already talked about, I already talked about earlier today. You see, she's a, yeah, she's, she's one of the early, she's one of the early ones too. I said her and Neil, hands down. That was Bruce Bernard's son. Um, people thought he was a woman at first. I was like, oh my God. But he's just, just like, who's she? They're like, it's a boy. She's in crackers. Um, but yeah, he was on yesterday with Joss. Um, <clears throat> but see, Ricky Martin can't count that either because he was in Menudo. He was in Menudo, huge star Menudo. Then he came on the show. And again, him and Tony Sabato Jr., who played Jagger, Vanessa Marcel, they're all kind of, they're all kind of, I was in, I was in the Bay Area by then, Adam. I was up, I was up in, Sa in San Francisco. I was going to the war field, I think. Um, and, and they, it's, but it's, you can make a co-host. Um, it, they were, they were, you know, it's, yeah, it's, they, they had some Latino people there of that time, but they weren't playing, Lat they weren't playing Latino. Jagger Cakes, that's not Latino. They didn't play it. Best Marcel's half Latino. They were playing there. She just she was Brenda Barrett. She did not play Latino. Um, Ricky Martin played one, and also the other guy who's married to um, Elizabeth in real life. Those two were Latino, but again, Ricky left and became a superstar. He was a he was okay. He was a minor hit on a soap, but he left and became a superstar later. So I think it's great you guys are naming people. I'm saying I'm talking about. Who became superstars on the show they were on? Who became superstars on the show when they were on, in spite of their race? And you'll find you'll like, keep going. You'll keep. You'll find very little. John Stamos didn't play Latino. He played Blackie, which that's a name right there. So I mean, he didn't play. He didn't play Latino. He didn't play Latino. They they completely they completely whitewashed everybody. That's what, that's what they used to do back in the day. If you're gonna play an ethnic character, they had the, they had the Asian corner story back then. It was a caricature. They would put on people. And if they were Asian or any other race, it was really played up. Remember back the cast lines, it was the Greek Russians. So they were they were played, they played that heavily. They were the ethnic ones. Um, and that was and being Greek was a, was ethnic back then. I have friends who were Greek, and they were and they were considered like, well, you're not exactly white. So like, but you're not exactly blank, whatever. It's just it's they had the Alcazars on GH, yes. But they killed them off. It's just, it's just, I'm just saying, it's just, it's one of these things I'm saying, Sydney, going back to Sydney Michaela, she completely is like, is one of the, is one of the few stars in a long time who defied race and age where everyone loved her on the show. 
that to me that's a big feat that everybody love you not everybody not everybody loves me trust me i have some, I have some enemies out there who don't like me Ugh. you know i i, t- I totally get this uh and, and it's fine so um, but, but most folks they liked her and if there's anybody who did like her i didn't hear about it. i didn't hear about it so i mean i i didn't hear about it so and it seems collectively there's a certain sadness to her leaving and we have to mourn the loss you know, just, just they say a character you've had for like, three years. I don't know how long she's been on the show. Yeah, more than the loss. Yeah, more than the loss. And let you know, let it and let it go. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, folks, my voice is going out. Apparently, I don't know why my voice is going out today. I don't know. I, I've been having problems with my voice since last night. Uh, probably because I talk too damn much on these shows. So I'm going to go rest my voice because I just can't seem to pull together. It's getting worse and worse. I'm like, wow, my voice is really getting hoarse. Um, thanks everybody for coming on. Um, thank you for coming on. It's uh, 22 people. Thank you, thank you, thank you this morning. Hit that like button. Uh, I'm going to post this and share with everybody and see what everybody thinks. Um, but to City Michaela, congratulations. The best of luck to you. We will follow you wherever you're going. And I think she's, I think she's going to do really great things um, in the future. And all you out there, I love you guys.